Hey friends, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, welcome! My name is Kevin and I create all types of theme park content, from the latest news in the industry, reviews, construction vlogs, and more. If that's something that you enjoy, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. My next goal is to reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I would love for you to be a part of my journey and help create our own little theme park community. Today I'm going to be creating a new series on the channel called Why It's Gone, or WIG for short. This is where we're going to be going over different coasters, rides, parks, or experiences that are now gone but aren't forgotten. If you have any rides or parks that you want me to cover, make sure that you leave them in the comments below. Now let's explore the story of Goliath and the issues that have faced over the years. So sit back, relax, and let's talk about why it's gone. The story of Goliath started back in 2001 where it first opened as Deja Vu at Six Flags Magic Mountain in Valencia, California. Deja Vu was one of three coasters announced to open at the park for the 2001 season, the other two being X, the first of its kind fourth dimension coaster, and Goliath Jr., a Bradley and Kay Little Dipper that originally was an opening day coaster at the park, but after the 1998 season was put into storage and then reopened in 2001 as Goliath Jr. Deja Vu was the first of its kind giant inverted boomerang coaster. Six Flags plan on installing not one, not two, but three of these prototype coasters to open in the spring of 2001. The other two being located at Six Flags Over Georgia and Six Flags Great America. All three did not meet their targeted opening date of spring of 2001, and by the end of the summer, park guests were wondering if they were even going to open at all that year. The ride quickly earned the nickname Deja Vu. Deja Vu was known for its unique design. It featured an inverted shuttle layout that allowed riders to experience six inversions, three forward and three backwards. But what made this version different than the standard model is that Deja Vu included two 194 foot tall vertical spikes that both featured a catch guard, a tweaked layout that formed an X versus the standard model that never crossed over each other, and a new style of train that had staggered seating where every odd number row was put together and every even number row would be split apart, creating an ultra thrilling experience. However, as thrilling as it was, Deja Vu had its fair share of mechanical issues. Like many complex roller coasters, it faced multiple challenges that affected its reliability and led to multiple closures over the years. The ride ran into a few difficulties during testing. The first being with the coaster's harness design. The park quickly realized that guests would be able to reach the track while the train was in motion, so the restraints were modified to add an additional bar to prevent guests from reaching their arms too high. The ride also took much longer than anticipated to program due to the ride's catch cars. The catch cars on this model are designed to catch the train in roughly the same spot, but the problem is that the trains were not always going the same speed. Things like the temperature, wind, rain, train weight all played factors in the extended programming delay. Now, with the coaster being located in Southern California, rain wasn't a huge issue, but sometimes the wind and temperatures below 55 degrees, they could be. Deja Vu eventually opened on August 25th, 2001 to massive crowds and long waits. The coaster over its time at Magic Mountain was extremely popular, but sadly, it was barely ever open. The park worked really hard to try to make modifications to the attraction and make it as reliable as possible. One modification that was made was the addition of an evac platform for the coaster's cobra roll just in case the coaster ever stalled up there, like it would frequently do at the bottom of lift 2. After 10 seasons, rumors began to swirl that the coaster was getting removed and possibly sent to another park, and in August of 2011, Six Flags confirmed those rumors. So I had the opportunity to work on Goliath from 2012 to 2018, so a lot of what's up next in this video is first-hand experience. At the time, Goliath was a huge deal for Six Flags New England, as it was the first major thrill coaster the park has seen since 2002 when Batman the Dark Knight debuted at the park. Goliath was announced to open in the spot of the park Shoot the Shoots ride, Shipwreck Falls, which is located in Crack Axle Canyon. Six Flags New England wanted to throw in an easter egg for Shipwreck Falls, and the coaster reused the station as a covered switchback area for the queue house. The coaster was also announced to open with a brand new train. Designed by Six Flags engineers and built by Premier, the train was going to feature four across seating in a singular row versus the staggered seating that it had before. Thankfully, the train was back ordered to 2013 and Goliath opened to the public on May 25, 2012 to great reviews. The coaster did great things to the park and it was often ranked as the second best or best coaster in the park by many enthusiasts. 
The coaster was intense, smooth, fast, and the only coaster in the park to include a vertical drop. The 2012 season for the coaster was pretty rough though. The coaster had frequent downtime, some only being a few moments while others lasted a few weeks. One big thing that played Goliath at Six Flags New England versus Six Flags Magic Mountain was the rain. Goliath was not able to operate in any rain due to the possibility of the ride slipping through the catch cars and not completing the ride cycle. By the end of the 2012 season though, the ride was beginning to operate pretty reliably until the cold temperatures came around. At the start of the 2013 season, Goliath did not open with the park as Six Flags was installing and testing the new train. The new train looked very nice. With the floor across seating, the goal was to increase rider capacity by eliminating guest confusion when trying to locate their seat. There was just one problem. The train didn't work. The train was just far too light and wouldn't catch on the lift too. While the park and Premier made modifications to the train, the decision was made to take the new train off and put the old one back on, and just after a few weeks of testing and commissioning, Goliath reopened for the 2013 season to large crowds and long waits. But this time, it didn't have long waits because of downtime. During the 2013 season, the ride experienced very little downtime and only saw weather downtimes or small little nuisance floor faults that only lasted a few moments. The ride saw its highest throughput it has ever seen as the ride crew was consistently getting 700 riders or more per hour, which is great for a shuttle coaster. But sadly, this wouldn't last long for the coaster. In 2014, the ride once again did not open with the park in April, as the park was hard at work making additional modifications to the platform gates and testing out the new trains. Some modifications that were made were the addition of a cage added to the unload front position. Originally, the coaster opened with just a waist-high gate, but with the addition of the new train, the park opted to add a full-size cage to protect the unload front attendant from loose articles. The team member gates leading to the load and unload platform were also equipped with magnetic locks that only the ride operator could unlock. Metal bars were also added across every even-numbered row to block off where the staggered seating rows used to be as they were no longer needed. After a few weeks of testing, the train was working as it was intended to, but there were a few other problems that arose. One big problem was the sound. The new train was so loud that the staff was now required to wear hearing protection while working on the attraction. The coaster was so loud in fact that you could hear around Batman's unload platform on the complete opposite side of the park. Also, the train was not really padded and it didn't really track the coaster well, leading to extreme roughness and headbanging. The ride experience went from being fast, smooth, and intense to feeling like you've been thrown off a cliff in a trash can. The ride went back to having moderate downtime as well, but this time it was mainly due to the train. The train had a lot of mechanical issues due to it being a prototype, but with that being said, at no point was the coaster ever unsafe or dangerous. The main issue with the new train is that the restraints wouldn't unlock, and maintenance would have to come and get the guests off. If this happened more than once in the same seat, the seat would be closed off for the day or until maintenance could do an in-depth inspection of that seat. The ride also started getting a ton of miscatches, causing evacuations at the base of lift 2. Thankfully though, the ride was prepared for this. There was a winch installed at the base of lift 2 to help with evacuations as well as to line the train back up with the catch car. Once the catch car was engaged with the train, the winch would be removed and the train would be pulled up lift 2 in maintenance mode and then released back down the spike to return to the station. After a few test cycles were completed, the coaster would reopen to guests. Now this downtime would roughly last 1-2 to two hours. 2014 was the first season where popularity started to decline as many guests no longer wanted to ride the coaster due to its extreme roughness. Goliath's popularity over the years continued to decline, but in 2016, the ride's most notable accident occurred when Lift 1's catch car cable became dislodged from the winch and fell to the ground while the train was parked in the station. Thankfully, the ride was in the home position and no one was injured. In the same season, the park installed a new wheel compound to the ride to give it a smoother ride experience to guess. By doing this, the ride's wheels were now overheating, causing the wheels to create more friction, which in turn led the ride to miscatch more. To combat this, the park installed a new timing light to the attraction but the main hope was to allow the wheels enough time to cool down so that way the ride wouldn't miscatch. Some days during the summer, the timer could make the operators wait anywhere between 2-5 to five minutes. Because of this, staffing was cut way down at Goliath so that way the coaster would only ever run with 3 team members, 1 operator and 2 attendants. This was a stark comparison to a couple years before when the ride would always operate with 6, 1 operator, 4 attendants and 1 grouper. As the years went on and the ride's popularity continued to decrease, Six Flags made a decision to remove the second queue house and turn it into a very small, out-of-place restaurant which was barely ever open. The park also continued to try to update the attraction to get it into a reliable state and increase team member safety. One change made in 2018 was the operator panel was moved 90 degrees to face the ride platform and the gate was moved inside of the station versus on the load platform to allow for better access during a downtime. Unknown to anyone, 2019 would be the last season for the coaster. 
while rumors were swirling around for a while that the ride would be removed, nothing was confirmed for a few years. In 2020, the park didn't open due to COVID, and then when the park did reopen in 2021, the coaster sat SBNO, or standing but not operating, for the entire season. While the park knew that the coaster wasn't going to reopen that season, as they never even installed the train on the track, rumors once again went around saying that the coaster might actually be relocated, but soon after the announcement, Photos of the ride being chopped up and sent to the scrapyard were posted online and the ride became history. So why is it gone? To put it simply, it had to do with mainly the maintenance of the train and the issues that it caused on top of the issues that the ride was already having. I'm a firm believer that if the park just bought a new train from Vacoma, the ride would still be around today. As shown in 2013, the coaster was running very reliably. It's a shame that the coaster had the fate that it did because it was truly an amazing coaster with the old train. Goliath used to be one of my favorite coasters to work on and I'm really gonna miss it. I worked on that ride for many years and it brought me so many good memories. I'm really sad to see it go, but I understand that it was this time. But anyway friends, that's going to do it for today's video. So what do you think of this new series? What rides or parks do you want me to do next? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe as it really helps the channel out and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, bye!